All right, find the slope. We have to take the change in the y, negative 6 minus negative 3, over the change in the x's. When I subtract, I have to keep the first number, change subtraction to addition, take the opposite of the second number. Negative 6 plus 3 is negative 3. 3 minus 2 is 1, so my slope is negative 3. Next, what is the slope? Now we have ordered pairs, but we do it the same way. Subtract the y's. 8 minus 6 over 7 minus 3. 8 minus 6 is 2. 7 minus 3 is 4, which simplifies to 1 half. Find the slope. I know you guys haven't seen anything like this, but Slope is just rate of change. So what's the rate at which these numbers are changing? To get from 5 to 11, you add 6. To get from 11 to 17, you add 6. 17 to 23, 23 to 29, you still add 6. So your slope is 6. What is the slope? Well, slope is rise over run. This horizontal line is not rising any, so it has a rise of zero. It doesn't matter what you divide zero by, your number will still be zero. So this slope is zero. Anytime you have a horizontal line, the slope is zero. Find the slope of the given line. We can do this one of two ways. We can do it the math way, doing y minus y over x minus x. Or we can just count how far we're going up and how far we're going over. We rose one, two, three, and we ran one, two, three, four, five, six, which simplifies to one half. If you wanted to do it by the points, you have negative four, negative two and 2, 1, you would subtract your y's over your x's. 1 minus negative 2 is 3. 2 minus negative 4 is 6. And that simplifies to 1 half. Our next one, what is the slope of the equation and what is the y-intercept? And y equals mx plus b. m is your slope. B is your y-intercept. So in this equation, 3 is our slope. Negative 5 is our y-intercept. So M is 3. B is negative 5. What is the equation of line? To find the equation of line, you have to find the slope. So we said we went up one, two, three. We went over one, two, three, four, five, six, which means that our slope is one half. This equation crosses the y axis at zero. So our equation is one half x. We don't add anything to it because our y intercept is zero. And if you add zero to anything, that number stays the same. So you will just leave it. The ordered pairs are 9, 3, and 19, negative 17. What is the equation? Again, we have to find our slope by subtracting our y's. 17, negative 17, minus 3. Putting that over 19, minus 9. Negative 17 minus 3, when you do additive in first, gives you negative 20. 19 minus 9 gives you 10, and that simplifies to negative 2. When I get to this part, I plug my m in, my slope in for the m, pick a y to plug in for the y variable, and then pick an x, the x that goes with the y that you chose, to plug in for your x. This does not mean that x equals 9 and y equals 3. It just means we're taking 
an ordered pair that's on the graph, and we are plugging it into this equation to solve for b. The only way that I can solve for b is if b is the only variable that's left. So this gives me 3 equals negative 2 times 9 plus b. Negative 2 times 9 is negative 18. And to get b by itself, I have to add 18 in order to make that 0. 18 plus 3 is 21. So my slope is negative 2. My y-intercept is 21, which makes my equation y equals negative 2x plus 21. Which equation represents the graph? Well, we know automatically it can't be b because we have a positive slope. Our graph passes through the y-axis at negative 5, which is only d, but let's check the slopes to make sure we're correct. We're going up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, to the right 1, which means my slope is 7, so my answer is d. Which has the greater slope? Well, for a table, we subtract our y's over our x's, negative 6 minus negative 3, over 3 minus 2. When we do the additive inverse, that gives us negative 3 over 1, which is negative 3. For two ordered pairs, we work it out the same way, 6 minus 5 over 3 minus 0. 6 minus 5 is 1 over 3. One third is bigger than negative 3, so A is out. For C, if I have an equation, the slope is the coefficient of x. It's the number right in front of x. 2 is greater than 1 third, so B is out. And for D, this is the graph that we just had. Our slope is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 over 1, which is 7. And that is bigger than 2, so our graph has the greater slope. Find the rate of change and the initial value. Rate of change is, of course, slope. So that is negative 6 minus negative 3 over 3 minus 2. Negative 6 plus 3 is negative 3. 3 minus 2 is 1. My slope is negative 3. Initial value is your starting point or your y-intercept. It's what is y when x is 0. So I need to take my slope and an ordered pair and plug it in for y equals m times x plus b. Negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. And to get b by itself, I add 6 to both sides, and that gives me positive 3. 3 is my initial value, or my y-intercept. Negative 3 is my slope, or my rate of change. Again, we're going to find the rate of change in the initial value. 8 minus 6 over 7 minus 3. 8 minus 6 is 2. 7 minus 3 is 4 which simplifies to one half. I pick an ordered pair to plug into my equation. That gives me 6 equals one half times 3 plus b. One half times 3 is 3 halves. In order to get b by itself, I subtract 3 halves from both sides. When I am subtracting fractions, I have to turn my whole number into a fraction. And my denominators have to have the same base. Well, what will both 1 and 2 go into? They'll both go into 2. What do I do to 1 to get to 2? I multiply by 2. And what I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top as well. This becomes 12 over 2 minus 3 over 2. 12 minus 3 is 9. Keep your denominator. And this is your initial value, or your y-intercept. Find the rate of change in initial value. This is going to give us negative 6 minus negative 3 over 3 minus 2. That gives us negative 3 over 1. And we plug a point in y equals mx plus b. 
negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. Add 6 to both sides, and you get positive 3 as your initial value. And finally, we have Tommy begins playing arcade games with $20. This is his initial point, or his y-intercept. He spends $2 a minute, when you have a minute or per something, that's going to be your slope. What is his initial value? Well, his initial value is the $20. What is his rate of change? His rate of change is $2. So our equation is 2x, y equals 2x plus 20, where 2 is the rate of change. And... 20 is his initial value. And that concludes our brief review over Unit 5. One thing I would like to add is a reminder that you have to isolate your y variable if it is not already done so. Which means if we have 4x plus 6y equals 24, before I can do anything with this, I have to get y by itself. So the first thing I need to get rid of is what is not attached directly to the y, and that would be this 4x. Well, how do you get rid of 4x? It's a positive 4x, so you subtract 4x from both sides. That leaves me with 6y on the left. I cannot combine 24 and negative 4x, so I have to just write them beside each other, because there's nothing I can do with that. Now, to get rid of this 6, I have to break up the 6 and the y. I'm going to divide by 6 on both sides. That leaves me with my y. My y is finally by itself. This 6 affects the 4 and the 24. So that gives me negative 4 divided by 6, x, plus 24 divided by 6 is 4. My slope will simplify because 2 will go into both of those. So my equation is y equals negative 2 thirds x plus 4. And when you graph that, you're going to start at 0, 4 on the y-axis. And then you're going to move down 2 and to the right 3 to form a new point.